This is Mrs. Murphy and today we're going to learn a little bit about file structures. We're going to learn about FAT and NTFS file structures. We're going to talk about sequential versus random access files and then we're going to show you some hashing algorithms. You ever need to keep track of anything? How about your keys? Your phone? What about that remote control? I know where our mine always is. It's always underneath the couch. You spend more time looking for the remote control than actually watching TV. Well, what about something more extensive? What if you're organizing patient files in a doctor's office? Well, hopefully you'd have something better than the storage system in this, this filing cabinet shown here. Uh, this is pre-computer hard drive right there. Well, that's the job of a computer is to organize and find files. A computer has to keep track of tons of information. Not as only does it store your files, your music, your videos, your pictures, but it stores all of the files for the operating system. In order to accomplish this effectively, the computer needs some sort of file system that keeps track of all the files and the information on the computer. A computer's way of organizing the data is similar to our filing cabinet example. There's the filing cabinet itself that represents storing all the information. Then each cabinet might have one or more drawer, such as a computer might have m one or more storage device. The filing cabinet also has directories and subdirectories and files, just as though you've seen on the computer file explorer. They even intentionally make the folders look like those old manila envelopes that would hang in a filing cabinet. So when you see a file in your file browser, you know to click on it to open the file. Then the computer needs to know where that file is located, actually located on the hard drive. Different operating systems use different types of filing systems, so each may find that file a, a different way. You ever have that hard drive that you've used forever in your Windows machine, then tried to plug it into your friend's Mac to share some files? Uh, no, of course not, Mrs. Murphy. We don't share files like that anymore. Well, anyway, pretend that you do. I have one. How's that? I have a, a hard drive that I store all my information on. And these are the properties of my hard drive. You can tell that the file system is NTFS. This is not quite going to work very well on a Mac or Linux machine. Compare that to this card, the properties for the card I have for my camera. That uses a file system called XFAT. This one's compatible with pretty much any computer device out there. It was designed with external storage devices in mind. Before we can talk about how filing systems work, you need to know a little bit about the hard drive. Hard drive has a platter that turns around on a spindle. There's a head attached to an arm that reads the information on the disk. That platter is where the data is stored, and it has different rings of information called tracks. Some tracks are larger than others depending on where they are on the hard drive. If it's towards the center, it's a little bit smaller. If it's towards the outside, it's a little bigger. Now the hard drive's organized into different wedges called disk sectors. Each section in that sector on a particular track is called a track sector. Data is stored among several track sectors that are clumped together called clusters. And if you put that all together, here's the diagram of the entire hard drive. <laughs> 